Now, the, in, in, in terms of the, the, the superhero universe, you know, you have on the big screen movies, you have the classic characters, Batman, Superman, you know, the Avengers and all that stuff. On the small screen, we're seeing Flash, shows like Arrow, and other, I, wanna, I don't want to say non-traditional heroes, but you have this sort of another tier of heroes. And, yeah. and they're having, you know, success, Legends of Tomorrow and all, you know, like I said. Um, why do you think that's, that's happening? Well, I think some of it is politics. Right? I mean, clearly, these are Warner Brothers properties. I, I can't speak in terms of uh, Marvels and, and some of the other shows that are not DC or Warner's. But in terms of Warner Brothers properties, uh, this is, you know, every single time there's a, a character on our show, there's some sort of check and balances that, that goes through um, in terms of DC and Warner Brothers. I don't know, that's way above my pay grade in, in terms of who that goes to. But there's approval and approval and approval and approval. And, you know, and the pu public, you know, the fans are, are, are uh, well aware of this. We had, for example, in I think the second season, as we started to experiment with the Suicide Squad, um, yeah. Harley Quinn. Yes. And, you know, there are some issues with that. I don't, and again, this is way above my pay grade. But I think some of what was happening with her ended up being just kind of a voiceover and you saw her from the side. And that wasn't originally what was intended, uh, but there's a long list of people that kind of have to approve of this. So um, we had, we killed our dead shot and our Amanda Waller, and there yeah, are some yeah. things around that. So I, I don't know how that is attached to what they want exactly. Like I said, that's above my pay grade, but um, you know, that's, that's part of the game, you know? So getting back to what you're saying, how do we, these kind of these, smaller characters on the TV. I, I don't know how it works in terms of having these big, huge characters like Aquaman, and I can't wait to see Justice League, by the way. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. And, and Jason's a good friend, and I just, yeah. just rocks, rocks Aquaman. Yeah. He's just a beast. Um, man, I got invited to the Wonder Woman premiere, and I had to miss it. <laughs> this weekend? But I was in San Juan, Puerto Rico, well, baby. Yeah, you had to be here, of course. But you I know Jason was here a few years ago. He was like Jason Mahal. Yeah, no, I know. He, no, he told me about it. He was like, dude, San Juan's great. They're fantastic. Yeah, it's all no, good, no, no, he's, he loves this place. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't, you know, you're right. There, some of the bigger characters are, are in the film. Some of the smaller characters are on, on television. I, I don't know. I, I, think, I think, again, it doesn't matter how small the characters are or how big the characters are. It's about the writing. Yes. Um, and it's about the connection, the, yeah. the relationship. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to Puerto Rico. Thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, when you started doing the performance as Deagle, do you ever, how do you felt when they told you, you know what, Deagle is going to be introduced in the comics section and it's because of you? No, it's because of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it really is. The fans did this. The fans identified with the Oliver Diggle, Oliver Felicity, Oliver Diggle Felicity relationship. That was something that really jumped off the screen and the fans latched onto. And, um, you know, there, there was a big speculation for a while, particularly during seasons one, two, and three, of this character, John Diggle, being John Diggle Stewart or John Stewart Diggle and that whole mythos. And, and that was put to, put to bed by the, by the higher ups, by the producers. Um, but then I got, and that was a little disappointing, to be totally honest with you. But then I got to really think about the idea that this was an original character, a character that never existed before. And we got to create, and still create, a mythos in John Diggle, aka Spartan, that will be around. The next 20 years, someone else, 20 years from now, someone else will play Diggle. And it started here, and it started because of the fans. Put, demanded that, this, that we see more of this character. DC listened. And in the direct answer to your question, how did I feel? I mean, like forever John Diggle in, as a Green Arrow comic book hero, that's awesome. Yeah. So I was incredibly proud and grateful, really, to just kind of be part of this. Again, no one saw this coming. Mm -hmm. you know, no one knew this was gonna happen. So I, I was the least um, of those. And, and so I'm, I'm very grateful and still remain grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. um, so my question is, 
What is your favorite cast member in Arrow, and what is the funniest moment you've had with them on set? Yeah, well, Stephen Amell clearly is my favorite, because... <laughs> He's the boss. But, but not only that, but, you know, we just crack each other up. Next to Stephen, and it's really a very, very, very close second, is John Girl. When every, it'll put it like this. If me, John, it, it happened less this past season because John was doing Legends of Tomorrow. But certainly in the, in the previous seasons, if there's ever a scene or, or a moment when me, John, and Steve are in a scene together or, or even around each other, and you see that particular take on television, that was the only one we did without laughing. <laughs> and that was the only reason why it got on television because we weren't laughing. So, I mean, we just crack each other up. And listen, man, it's, I've said this in convictions before. You ask what's the funniest thing, it's very asinine juvenile behavior, okay? We work 12, 14 hour days. So this isn't highbrow humor. This is fart jokes and, you know, it's just dumb, dumb things. So I can't really name anything specifically. I mean, we step on each other's foot, we hit each other in the ear, we, we thump each other, touches people. And um, because we don't see it up in Vancouver, man. We, like, look at Arrow. We're shooting at nighttime in the dark all the time. Flash, however. <laughs> yeah. It's all bright and pretty. Yeah, yeah. Get to shoot in the daytime. Don't get me started. But anyway. It's like East Coast, West Coast, everything. Yeah, it is, right? It's a little rivalry. But, but anyway, so, so we're, we're, very, we're very grateful anytime we get to these convictions, man. It's, it's, it never gets old for us. But, um, but we have a lot of fun because we, we do shoot very long hours. You have an opportunity to carry this mythos into a larger medium like films. Would have been awesome. Um, but, I, but I get it. I get it as, as a business decision and I, and I get the idea of having these different um, people put their stamp on these characters. Again, Diggle will be played by somebody else many years from now. And yeah. So I, I get it. Would I have loved to have seen it? Absolutely, but I certainly understand it. Thank you. <laughs> that was, you played that very cool. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Hello. Hey. Uh, my question is, wh what was the most fun you guys had during the filming of the Invasion crossover with the cast and crew? What was the most fun you had during that crossover? Some of the, some of the, the jokes are X-rated. <laughs> so dirty that we can't talk about them, okay? Um, but some of the most fun we had were in the pods. Like, like they would say rolling and we all be turned around, like with our butts facing the cameras. And I mean, that sounds really like not funny, but we were crying laughing. I mean, so, some of the stuff was just, you know, during Invasion, it was, it was just running around the halls of the set that was supposed to be the spaceship and we were all in pajamas. Or we're, you know, that was supposed to be our pod, our, our abduction, uh, whatever, clothes. Um, you know, I, I wish I had something like that particularly was funny. But again, when you're working in this box for 12 hours, like we do some of the silliest things that just make us laugh. So um, You have to be there, you know? You just kind of, it, it, it is kind of you have to be there, but... Yeah, the funniest thing about Invade... I, I think also, man, just seeing the aliens, I don't know how they look to you guys on camera, <laughs> but they have basketball players like playing the aliens. So they had these six foot ten dudes like walking around in these alien outfits, and they looked hilarious. Like on set, we were just like cracking up, like you know, drinking water. Like like guys, you have any idea of how ridiculous you are? <laughs> um, so it's just funny stuff like that, man. But. It, you know, that was a lot of fun. We got a little away from, again, season five was a little more grounded, but clearly the abduction episode was not. Um, so we'll see what this year's crossover is, man. You know something? Put it on Twitter. What do you guys like to see as a crossover? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I, 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 thought, I thought Supergirl could have been more involved, to be honest with you, in the crossover. Um, I, I would love to see what, how we kind of tackle the crossover next year. You know? nice. We'll see you. Hey, David. Hey. Hey, feature sailor Marquez here. Uh, my question is this. 
Which would be your top three picks for DC villains to come into the Arrowverse um, in the coming seasons? Um, number one, the biggest villain, slash, we're not quite sure if he's a villain, uh -oh. would be Bruce Wayne. You heard it here. I would love that. I say that every place I go. Like, like, are you, are you, that's like, there's your ratings. <laughs> like Bruce Wayne's coming or we're going to Gotham. One or the other. And by the way, this isn't so far-fetched. I, I, I don't know, by the way, so I don't know anything. But if you remember, if any of you guys follow, you know, the conventions and the fan circuits and just hearing what the producers were saying back in season one, they said publicly, there will never be two cities mentioned in our universe. Mm -hmm. Metropolis and Gotham. And there will never be two characters we talk about. Superman and Batman. Guess what? <laughs> That's right. Now when we talk about me, Superman's in our universe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? So, and by virtue of that, Metropolis is there, clearly. So, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. But I would say the number one person I would like to see is we're not quite sure, is he part of the league right now? Is, is he a kid that just, his parents just died? Where in the world is Bruce Wayne? So, if, and if he is a full grown vigilante at this point, we, we gotta play with that vigilante, this vigilante thing to me, right? Yeah. So, to me, Bruce Wayne, number one. Number two, Manu Bonet, okay? Yeah. Destro. Yes. Like, our best bad guy, even though Adrian Chase was really, yeah. really good. This Great. is really, really good. Um, Manu Bonet. And I, I just think when he, when, he, when he came back to the, when I saw the, the clip of him coming back into the finale, it just gave me chills, you know, like Manu, Destro. I mean, that's, the bad, that's our bad guy. <clears throat> our third, you know, now since a certain thing has occurred, in the finale, which those of you who have not seen it, I won't give away. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if Thea wanted to cop revenge, if she's still dealing with some of the issues of, which we haven't talked about though, by the way, like her coming back from the dead and what that does, now that a certain person has left her life, who she's had a interesting relationship with, what does this do to that character? And what does that do to her relationship with Oliver? I think that's something you want to explore. I'm just saying. I don't know, I'm not a writer or a producer. But, you know, just as I'm a fan and I'm a geek, right? So I, I, I want to see that, that explored. So I would say in terms of, of bad guys slash good guys slash villains of next season or following seasons, I would say Bruce Wayne, Destro, Thea Queen. Nice. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Just my favorite. Nice. Good question. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. Hey, I got you. So what is your favorite line in your character? You ready? I have it. I have it. I'm ready. You ready? No, Oliver. That's the way. Yeah, next question. That's it. Right. Thank you. Hi, David. Hey. Um, we know recently that Stephen Amell competed and completed a full course in Ninja And Warrior. rocked it. Didn't he rock it? Yeah. yeah. Just ripped it. So my question to you is, um, do you feel up to the challenge for it? <laughs> would you like to do it, compete in it, or against him? Um, yeah, I mean, me and Stephen always have a healthy, healthy little rivalry, right? I mean, it's funny, too, because Stephen's really up my game. When I, when I, it was funny. When I met Stephen, I've told this story before, too. Stephen... Um, 
had a, a few weeks, maybe even a month or so to train. So when I first saw him, it was like a, a Actually, when I first saw him, he didn't really look, you know, I saw him in Vancouver, I met him, blah, blah, and it was, it was cool. I didn't really get to see much of his size. He was wearing a big shirt. And he was very friendly, and, and, and uh, Katie met her, and it was very nice. But then a, maybe a week or, or so later, there was a photo shoot that we had to all do promos. And um, we had these different rooms, and uh, I went to Steven's room, and Steven was like, I heard him in the room as the door was open, I was passing. I passed and somebody said, hey Dave. So I go back in the room and Steve is doing whatever and he has his shirt off. So he turns around and it's like, boom, muscle, just muscle, just muscle in his head, muscle in the back of the neck, like in his earlobe was like muscular. It was like, I was looking at him like, I, I'm your bodyguard? Like for real? I mean the dude was just, he was just jacked everywhere, right? And he, and he was he was acting like I wasn't supposed to notice. So he was like talking about some other stuff and he's just sitting around like, yeah, Dave, so um, you know, and I'm just watching look, looking at what him. What time is it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um so after that encounter, I realized that I had to kind of hit it hard. And I did. So and, and that was good. That was good for me too. So we always kind of had this little healthy rivalry. I can't do any better. Than, than, than he did on Ninja War. I mean, he just, he just rocked it. And then did it the second time. You know, just like, went back like, oh, let me do it again, just because I'm Stephen Amell and I'm bad like that. <laughs> you know? And just awesome, awesome thing for charity. So listen, if I got the opportunity to do it, I would love to do it. But it, it, something like that wouldn't be a competition. It, it's for charity. I, I, would, I would love to do it. You know what I would love to do? Even not so much even against Stephen. Yeah. I would love for me and Stephen to do that against another show. Oh, like, nice. call out the Supernatural Boys. You know what I mean? Oh, like what? That would be nice. Charity Jensen. Yeah. Little skinny asses. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come mess with me and Steven. You know well, what I mean? We, For Charity. We got a Twitter there. I like that. I like you that. know what I mean? Yeah. Or anybody else. I'm, 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 I'm actually writing a check for Steven that he may not be able to cash, so let me yeah. just... <laughs> But, but not, I, that's what I would like. Uh, not a, I wouldn't want to raise money against Steven. I would want me and Steven to raise money against someone else. That would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Good question. Thank you. Hello, David. Hey. Uh, my question is, what is your, who is your favorite villain from the whole Arrowverse? Yeah, well, you know, I love Mono, right? I mean, I, I think he's, I think he is the villain. Um, I, I just can't say enough about him. You know, Manu, Manu is a method actor. Mm -hmm. That's great. But Manu's real intense. And he, it's less now, but when he was on the show as a regular, Manu would get ready for the scene, he'd be down very low, and he would run around the set, you know, and get really ready. And <laughs> there was a scene, <laughs> I, you know who I miss? I miss Colton, I really miss Colton Hanks. Yeah. And there was a scene, man, I, I gotta tell you this my new story, because it was, it was awesome. I, I know you got a long line, but I gotta tell you this. <laughs> and if you guys remember the episode, Manu kidnapped Colton, he had him strapped up to this thing, and he had these other guys around, he was gonna inject them all with Murakuru, yeah, yeah, yeah. that. And um, there was, Another woman, her name uh, escapes uh, Summer. In the scene, she comes around, Arrow drops down from the ceiling, the glass breaks, he comes and unstraps Speedy, he's gonna take him back up, and then Summer Blau's character comes around, she has a gun on, on Arrow, but Diggle shows up on the balcony, right yeah. there, pow, shoots Summer, she falls dead. Okay, you know that scene. All right, maybe you don't. If you do, get season two, check it out. Anyway, um, but in the scene, I'm standing on the balcony. About 20 feet below, there's, um, there's Colton. He's facing me like this, strapped up. So I can see him, he can see me, but no one else can see him. He's looking right at me, his eyes are closed like this because he's supposed to be unconscious. Okay, action, Summer Glau comes around. 
She gets the beat on on uh, on Errol, who drops down. I I get the beat on her. Pow! She falls dead. My new Burnett comes around the corner, and in his angst of seeing the dead summer glow, he goes down to her body and goes. Colton, who nobody sees except for me, is on the bench like this, and he goes, <laughs> the big guy. <laughs> he's, he's just shaking, because he can't control the laughter, right? He's just like. <laughs> but there are a lot of instances, man, with, 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 with Manu, where he would just make a choice that would just make us all go, wow. So, not only was he major entertainer on the set, he's just a fantastic actor, man, and I think he just embodied Destro, just embodied him. So, I would say Destro. Nice. All right, I'll be less long-winded. Go ahead, what's the next question? Hello, David. Hey. Thank you for coming to the Puerto Rico Comic Con. Thanks for having me. I'm a big fan. Thank I've you. been watching Arrow for a long time, and um, I want to say that the cast is amazing, especially Emily. I think yeah, she plays Felicity. I love her. Wouldn't She's it be so great to get them down here in San Juan? Yes! You know, you gotta check that thing, Cash. I know. I mean, it'd be awesome. on the spot, they're, man. I think they're, they're, in, uh, they're in London right now. Yeah. Right. And, and my question is, <clears throat> if you have the power, well, in the studio, let's say, they say, hey, David, which superhero would you like to be? Who would you choose? Um. Hey, don't look at me. <laughs> I, I, my favorite, I have a lot of favorites, but I, I love Moon Knight. Oh, oh that's nice. Yeah. You guys weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> yeah, Moon Knight's my favorite character. Yeah, I, I would love, I, I think that's just a character waiting to be ripped up. All white. I mean, who dresses in the, who's in all white? Yeah, yeah, that's like a dandy. That's kind of dope. Yeah. Yeah, Moon Knight. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, David. Hey. Huge fan. You. Uh, you mentioned Thea earlier, but what other, what other storyline would you like to see more of? Well, again, I think that's a storyline waiting to happen with, with Thea. I think we should make a decision on Oliver and Felicity, get them together or part one or the other. Get that out the way. And um, just make a decision. It's all. But, you know, for, for me, I think if, if they're together, it should be kind of like, um, like, 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 Diggle and Lila. Yeah, yeah. It's just a matter of fact they're together. No big deal. Whatever. Keep it moving. You know what I mean? So, or they're apart. I, I think just for me, I think there's a, there's a storyline there that has to be flushed out. Finally. All right? To me. Thea, obviously. There's, there's a big chunk of what happened on, on the island and what she feels about that that we can just delve into. Diggle and Lila. She's the leader of Argus, for God's sakes. Like, what does that do to their household? His son grows up to be Connor Hawk. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a break. I mean, that's like yeah. rich. We can do some time traveling. Who the hell is Diggle's doppelganger? Yeah. Right? Is it the lantern? Yeah. Again, I'm just at me. saying. I'm not a writer. But. Or a producer. But. I'm just saying. You know, was Diggle hatched or does he have parents? Have we seen his parents, for God's sakes? Everyone has parents on this show, except for John Tittle. Okay. I'm just saying. Okay, so there's a story, all right? So, all right, and then you have the backstory of Renee. Yes. All right, you have the backstory of the new Canary. Um, you have the new Black Siren, Katie Cassidy, welcome back. Yeah. Her redemption story or not redemption story? Is she a bad guy? Is there a team up bad guy between the Canary and Speedy? Who knows? I think there's so many. I'm not even a writer and I just came up with five, six, seven stories. So it's like there's so many rich stories in the show, unlike a lot of shows, believe it or not, that are, that are reaching for stories. They're, try, they're trying to 
create some drama because all the characters just aren't interested or 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 they're they exhausted every story they have there's so many stories in the Arrowverse, particularly on on Arrow, that we can explore. So there's there's four of them, I think. I don't know what I mean. I just mentioned just not five. You're welcome. Thank you. Hey David, hey. big fan. Hey Constantine. Thanks. Let's bring him back, right? I mean, give me a break. There's another story. That's five. Question. Your character started from a military man, a bodyguard um, Oliver, yeah. until now into just a family man, was also the vigilante known as Spartan. How did you cope from this point to now how Diggle is? Did you imagine that or was that something you actually liked that to happen? Well, well a couple of things. Number one, practically, Diggle could no longer run around while you had Speedy in a red leather outfit green arrow in a green leather outfit, the canary in a black leather outfit, and Diggle in jeans and a bomber jacket. He just couldn't do it, right? He had his clock and everyone else was superheroes. So practically he had to get some sort of concealment and armament, and we wanted to make sure that was some, in some way practical with his character. So we made Kevlar and some camouflage, some other stuff on the helmet that we is still going through iterations. We have to find out what the heck this helmet does, by the way, which is another story. Anyway, um, so um, I, I, listen. I, again, Diggle has been through his catharsis. He's been through his Afghanistan. He's been through his island. Arrow is a character that the hero's being created. I, I think that the, the Diggle Lila relationship and Diggle as a character is probably about three or four years more evolved than Oliver. He's adjusted to the idea of being both a father and a vigilante. Oliver is still struggling with that. He's still trying to figure out how he can be true to his family, have a relationship, be a vigilante, deal with his darkness. He's still figuring that stuff out. Diggle has, he's been through that. And that's why he's such a wonderful friend to Oliver, because he can mentor him and he can deal with his post-traumatic stress syndrome, which is exactly what Oliver's been dealing with. Yeah, yeah. So, and he, and he understands that as a soldier. So I, I think um, Diggle has made the adjustment. So how does, how is that done? I, I just think under, giving, I think just understanding the character. I think John Diggle is a, is a very evolved character. Probably the most evolved of the group. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, uh, I always wanted to ask you, how did you react when they told you were going to be in a DC TV show? Oh, you know, so I was doing another show called Blue Bloods, right? And I was just kind of guest starring on that show. It was a great look, great show, still going. And Greg Berlanti saw me on that show. I didn't meet him, I met Andrew Kreisberg, who was told by Greg Berlanti that I want this guy. So I met Andrew, and Andrew was like, listen, Dave, we love you on the show, fantastic you don't have anything to do in the pilot. Mm -hmm. But you become like the second guy, right? You find out very quickly that he's Arrow and you become like his right-hand guy. So I was ecstatic, man. I was like, great, I was a geek. I loved Green Arrow. And it was like, you know, no one knew it was gonna be this big, but just to play a comic book, I, I didn't know it was gonna be a hero. I didn't know he was gonna become Spartan. And so me and, me and Steven just had a lot of days just kind of brooding and talking like this a lot of this. <laughs> and, you know, then Felicity came and brightened it up, so it was great. <laughs> so it was great, man. When I, when, I first, when, I, when I first found out, I was ecstatic. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hey. Uh, my question is, how does it feel when Arrow was brought back to its roots in, roots in this last season and how it ended? How I think that we did have a return to form. I mean, did you guys, did you guys like season five? Yeah. I, 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 I think it was. I think it went, you know, I think there was a, I think we thought the, there was going to be a different bad guy at the beginning. Um, it went in a totally different direction. I think it's, we stayed true to our theme. I think it went back to kind of this grassroots crime fighting, street level uh, crime right for fighting drama. And um, I don't know what that theme is next year, but I, I, I think, you know, 
some fans left the show, you know? And um, I think we got some of those fans back, not all of them, and we got some new fans. So um, I, I think the writers, and uh, credit to the writers and the executives, these guys really making a, a, a blueprint for us to follow. I think we did it this year. Yes. Thank you. It's been season five, and all the flashbacks could be over, or there will be flashbacks for the new season, or what's going to be the focus of the story? I, I would, it, would, okay, I, I don't know if there, as far as I know, no more flashbacks, as far as I know. Now, unless you guys have heard differently, that's, that's what I know. Um, that the show inherently had a five-year life, because there was five years worth of story we had to tell about the island. I think we did that. And um, from my understanding, now that's over. We have eight minutes of television to tell, and we have to fill that up with some other stories. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, David. Hey. Welcome to Puerto Rico. Thank um, you. At the beginning of the show, this, this one, you said you like Mofongo. And I wanted to know, have you ever or este, gone or ever wanted to go to Orokovi to, to taste the food over there? Did I ever want to go where? Orokovis. Orokovis is a town uh, in the central part of the island that specializes in fried pork and mofongo and all that good stuff. They make that stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to go, man. It's high up in the mountains. Oh, is it mountains? Yeah, it's a mountain range. I, do, I, do I have to walk up the mountain? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll deal with that later. Well, well, thank you for your Yeah, the answer is yeah, man. Wherever, wherever there's fungo, I want to be. This stuff is so good. Thank you. Hey, bro. Hi, David. Hey. Uh, thanks for coming to Comic Con. Uh, Dexter is one of my favorite TV shows. So yes. my question yes. for you Thank is, you. Uh, for that. who nice. is your favorite cast member to work with and what do you thought about the ending? Ooh. <laughs> That's a loaded question. That is a loaded question. <laughs> um, But I don't work for Showtime anymore. So. Okay. Right. <laughs> Take it away. Yeah, no. Um, Michael C. Hall is brilliant. I mean, just, we haven't seen enough of him. I, I, I miss him on television. I miss seeing him. I, I would love to see a Dexter reprisal. I think, you know, not killing him and him living with his dark passion to up in, as some lumberman in Alaska. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's a story that I, I hopefully those producers and executives want to tell. I don't know if Michael wants to tell it, but I would love to see that. Um, Jennifer was, was, I had most of my work with her. She was fantastic to work with. My first scene of the day was a scene in bed with Jennifer. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, how, how, do you, how does that work out? What was funny was that Michael C. Hall was behind, like he was looking at it on the monitor. And, you know, it was kind of weird because, you know, after you kind of done in the scene, I kind of look over the monitor and he sticks his head out and goes, So Michael was Michael was the best. He was the best, and and I, I would love the opportunity to work with him again. He's a brilliant, brilliant actor. So he was he and Jennifer, right? You know, they were the best to work with. Thank you. So, hey, so my question is, how would you convince someone who hasn't seen your show to watch it? Um, oh, that's a great question. I would first ask them if if um, if they like if they like stories with a lot of action. I wouldn't ask them if they're comic book fans, because I think you can be a fan of Arrow without being a fan of the, of the comic books. Because yeah. I think it's, yeah. it, is, it is first an, a loaded with action. It, there's a lot of human drama. I, I think we can, there was a time when I could have said there's a certain amount of lightness to, lightness to it, because there was some funny elements. But I would say that if you like a lot of action, um, if you like a lot of human drama with your action, a lot of cool relationships. I would say watch our show. It's, I, I think it's a lot of fun. It's a little dark, um, but I think that's the appeal. So um, I would start with that. Good question. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey. Um, yeah, um, I watch all the shows on the DC um, shows. And um, the finale in Flash, it was like um, Flash revisiting what he did in Flashpoint. Right. That he did it like selfish and everything. And it, like, his past was haunting him. Do you think that um, like plot like made a little bit or helped in Arrow's um, season five plot? I don't know if it, it helped in part of it, obviously, because Flashpoint. Uh, be honest with you, I, I'm I'm a big fan of the whole Flashpoint um, uh, uh, kind of mythos, the storyline, and injustice. To me, I don't know this, 
it feels like the movies are kind of following the Injustice theme and the television shows, the DC Universe is kind of following the, the Flashpoint theme. It, it feels like. I don't know. And, and of course, they kind of jump in and out. And like I said, those are political decisions I don't know about. But yes, Flashpoint did affect our universe, namely Diggle, uh, with, with the, his child being affected. I would love to see how much further that goes. You know, I, mean, I, I the Flashpoint cartoon, or not cartoon, but the animated uh, movie, was wicked, man. And it, it, I would love to bring some of that stuff to our universe. You know, I don't, you know, again, these characters are so rich. So there's even an answer to the question before, how, where would we like to see the stories go? Just open up the comic books. There's tons of yeah. stories to tell True. in the Arrowverse. True. So, um, yes, I would love to see Flashpoint go even further into season six and see how it affects us. I, I, again, I think the future Connor Hawk and John Diggle is a relationship waiting to be told. Great, thank you. Thank you, good question. Hey David, um, it's nice to meet you. Nice Love to your you. character in the series. However, besides Arrow, um, what character would you like to play down your career? I know, right? Um, what character would I like to play? Well, listen, every, every black actor at a, of a certain age in the U.S. at one point wanted to play Luke Cage, but that's gone now. Yeah, yeah. What are you gonna do? Um, and, and of course, there was a time when I wanted the power ring. Um, but you know something? I don't, I don't know. I, I would have to. That's a very, very good question. I think um, you know, there's. I don't know. I I, I haven't. I. Ha <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that when we get to the end. When we get to the end, I'll, I'll answer your question. Okay, I promise. I promise. I'll I, I have to think about that one. I have to think about that one. That's a good question. Thank you. Welcome to Puerto Rico, David Ramsey. I'm a huge fan, especially when I saw you as Barden. <laughs> oh man, thanks, brother. Thank <laughs> I you. I wanted to ask, how did it feel when finally, like, the Arrowverse went along with the Flash, and then like? John Diggle had to act all impressed about Barry Allen being a meta human. That was one of the funniest things, right? The, th the fries throwing, man. That was one of the funniest things. Because Andrew Kreisberg was on the set that day, and he was like, dude, when you see Flash, I want you to freak out. And I was like, okay, freak out. So I, I took fries. He was like, no, go big. I was like, can I go as big as I want? He was like, just go huge. So I did, and it was, it was funny. We wanted to do something bigger for Supergirl. We wanted to see him, her go across the horizon and do something really silly for Diggle, but it ended up being something else. Um, but it was great, man. I, for me, I'm, I love the crossovers. I would love to see a few crossovers a year. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, that's the stuff you want to see as a fan. Yeah, that's, that's you know, what? you want to see these team ups. I personally think that we can go even bigger with the crossover next year in terms of just, you know, like the ante being raised. You know, I, I don't know what they plan on doing. But um, I, I just, I want to see, you know, more DC Universe characters coming maybe in the crossovers. You know, like, that's where you see Lantern. That's where you see maybe some other characters that you would never have seen in the regular shows in the crossovers. And that makes the crossovers even more special. Because now you not just have these four or five show crossovers, but you know you're going to see a character that you won't see. And that little Easter egg can be there. Again, I don't know what's, what they're going to do, but as a fan, I would love to see that. Yeah, I agree. Nice. Nice question. Thank you. Hi, nice to meet you. Hey. Welcome to Puerto Rico. Thank you. Um, as a fan yourself, are you Team Canary or Team Felicity for Oliver? Oh. <laughs> Some of these people, yeah, you're just, you're just trying to get drunk. You're, 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 you want some you're water? You want to die right you here? Just drink a this, I got friends. <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, I tell you something. In, in, in terms of the two actresses, they're both awesome. Um, I, I, I think I've always loved Oliver and Laurel. You know, I've always loved that in the comic book. I, you know, it, reading the Injustice series of how Oliver Queen gets killed by Superman and how the canary goes berserk and takes a pill and she's going after Superman. And 
and people who know the comic book series know what I'm talking about. But just, just, just that thing, you know, that canary, you know, sorry, that, that canary um, arrow, green arrow relationship is just something that I, I love. But I can't deny what, you know, what you see on screen, you know, between the chemistry between these two characters. I don't know how about this. Since there's so many Earths, yes. there you go. Yeah, we can have it both ways, can't we? <laughs> Oliver has slept with all of Starling City anyway, <laughs> and thank he you slept very much. with everybody except for Diggle's wife. Or <laughs> I'm just saying. So to me, go to one of these Earths and see it. Have, you know. I don't see why you can't have both. So there you go. That's my answer. That, that's a very political answer. I know, yeah. yeah. Now, so, yeah, let's tackle in, in answer that, to that question. Let's tackle that last question. Very nice question. Very nice question. Was there one more? Or was that it? Okay. No, we're good. Um, I would like to see a character, I would like to play a, a version of this character in human form, but you don't know it until later. Galactus. Nice. I would like to be Galactus, but not the way you've seen him. I would like to be, no one knows, he's, he's, he's a regular dude and he's gonna take over Earth, but he's maybe an executive, maybe he's a head of a corporation or something, and then he nice. just comes out, he's Galactus, oh my God. Nice. Anyway, I just found out up on this stage that I'm a writer. <laughs> I just found that out. There you I just go. found that out today. Puerto Rico, thank you. We have also Chris David Ramsey. You guys are awesome. My friend, thank you very much. For thank you, thank you guys so much. Great pleasure, thank you. Enjoy Arrow season six.